This is The Walrus and the Carpenter by Lewis Carroll. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd, because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily, because she thought the sun had no business to be there after day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The sea was wet, as wet could be. The sand was dry, as dry. You couldn't see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. There was no bird flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. The walrus and the carpenter. Walrus has big long teeth. And the carpenter mystery were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to, to see such quantities of sand, so much sand. If it were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. If, uh, if uh, seven maids with uh, seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose the walrus said that they could get clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. Uh, all oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did besiege. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to lend the hand to each. The oldest oyster winked his eye, and never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning that he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their clothes were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd, because, you know, they had any feet. And four more oysters hurried up, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, more and more and more, all hopping through the frothy waves and scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock, conveniently low, and all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried, before we have our chat, because some of us are out of breath, and all of us are fat. No hurry, said the carpenter. They thank too much for that. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar beside are very good indeed. Now if you're ready, oysters here, we can begin to feed. But not alas, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, it would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but, cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to take them such a trick after we made them come so far and make them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing but the butter spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears he sorted out those of largest size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his dreaming. Well, oysters, said the carpenter, we've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? The answer came none. And this was scarcely hard because they eat everything. Okay, there. <laughs>